Good morning and welcome back my fellow duplicants to Oxygen Not Included. This is episode 3 and getting started here in Oxygen Not Included. So our goal for this episode here is to take our ability to make some food and farms and whatnot to the next level a little bit. So we're going to want to expand a little bit beyond mealwood or maybe kind of organize it a little bit. Bristle blossoms are a little difficult because they consume a lot of water. So we don't necessarily want to rely on them that much. So what we really would like to do is eventually get to a point where we can work with uh, mushrooms. Mushrooms are a good thing to grow and they take slime, which is a little bit difficult because you have to deal with slime lung. So hopefully we can get a farm that's going to be set up to enable us to, to run dust caps. They sit around in carbon dioxide, which we're going to have a fair amount of because we're still running with coal generators right now. So that'll be good. The other thing we might want to set up here is kind of a ranch, and that's going to be for hatches. The reason I, I like to do that is because it gives me a little extra coal that I can use to kind of just run carbon uh, coal generators and whatnot. So I find having a little extra carbon dioxide around to be useful for, for various things here and there. So I think a good spot to set up a place for my hatches would be right next to this coal generator. It just seems kind of natural. It's nearby, and I could put a door in right there just to move the coal from here to there if I need to. Plus, it seems like it's in line with kind of the main shaft that I have going on over here, which is probably where a lot of my duplicates are going to move up and down. Again, it's worthwhile mentioning that you don't necessarily want to have a extremely long ladder because if your duplicate changes task, it in you know as they're climbing up or down a ladder, they'll actually drop whatever it is they're holding. So if that that shaft is super long, then you could just have a giant pile of stuff here at the bottom, which isn't that great. So you can see right now my dupes are running water back and forth far too much. I don't know. That's kind of an issue right now. I'm gonna have to try to get rid of that. The other thing that we were talking about here a little bit was with these lavatories. I could have two routes through them. Um, unfortunately, I can't really do anything with it right now because I got some bristle blossoms that are growing right here and they and that's where they stop growing at this height. So at cycle 54 or so, I'm gonna go ahead and, and once I've harvested these, I'm just gonna get rid of them and kind of move them to a different spot. I don't really need this many bristle blossoms right now but I would rather have more spots for my cots and more spots for the lavatory so I can kind of make use of that a little bit more. The other thing I'm going to want to research here for the bathroom is going to be insulated pipes because as we run water through the water sieve right here, it's actually going to be coming out at 40 degrees Celsius. And over time, that'll actually heat up the base. So once we have those insulated pipes, we can go ahead and just rebuild over the top of these pipes that are existing and that'll allow us to just, you know, make that stuff a little bit more heat effective, I guess. It's a good way of putting it. So in another video series called Heat Flusher, uh, we ended up using a loop like this to actually delete a lot of heat out of our base. Um, so we're actually using the water sieve to do that. Since you can bring it in, you can bring water in very hot and it'll exit at 40 degrees Celsius. We can take a lot of the heat out of our base that way. So that might come in handy when we actually want to keep certain farms and whatnot at the right temperature or just our base in general. The big thing here is when we go to uh, up our oxygen production from just using oxygen uh, diffuser or the terrariums, but actually using an electrolyzer, uh, the electrolyzer puts out a fair amount of heat. So you have to deal with that. Since I don't have, well, I do have eight dupes, but I have more than a few ways of generating oxygen at this point. It would probably be a good thing to have that set up here pretty soon. All right, so let's see if I can move this plumbing down a little bit. I'm doing a little bit more exploring down here because there's a lot more food that's available to me. You got mealwood. Uh, we got a little bit of muck root down there. This will also give me a spot where I can get to some slime and some dust caps down there. So the mushrooms. Not to mention another source of water, which I've kind of already used up. Uh, the first source of water, which was over here, and then the second source I'm sucking up. So once I kind of suck this dry here, I'll be able to kind of move on to this last one, and that'll give me a lot more space to build stuff here. So maybe that's where I'm going to do a lot of ranching or maybe a lot of farming. All right, so I was able to move that pitcher pump, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. And we'll just set up a real simple hatch farm, and that'll just be right here. There's some really cool automated, like, 
ranch systems people have come up with using automation and whatnot. Basically, the idea is using the critter sensor. You can open doors, drop them down to lower levels, and then actually, like, eat them at some point. I don't know if I'm going to go all that far just yet. We just want to get one thing set up. I think eight dupes is plenty for where I'm at in the game currently. So I'm just going to stick with that. <clears throat> okay, so the reason I like hatches is because they're fairly simple. And they give me two byproducts that I really like. Obviously, they give me food and they also give me coal. So... I'm, I'm a fan of them. They're also very plentiful early here, early on in the game. So I'm also going to keep giving my dupes something to do here. You know, keep digging up, keep going around. I've got a ton of sweeping tasks that are being, that are happening right now. Hassan! No, buddy, what have you done? All right. So when you have this situation, which you're going to have a lot because duplicates have a poor, li they make poor life choices. Um, <laughs> and this... <laughs> Look around for something that they have that they can build here. So sandstone is available. So all he needs to do is build this one tile and then he can get back to freedom and he's not going to die. So there you go. Ta-da. There, go grab some oxygen. Okay, so there's one thing I also didn't do last time. But when we look at the room overlays up here, I need to build this right there so that this actually becomes a uh, recreation room. So that the dupes will go there at the end of the day and kind of enjoy their surroundings. Inside of there, I can actually go ahead and put other stations. That'll allow them to be a little bit more effective in what they're doing. This crowned molding seems like it's really, really powerful. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that in all my rooms that I'm going to have a lot of stuff in there. So let's go ahead and do that. Ooh, can't put it there. Here I am. I, I love to give my dupes a ton of things to do, so... Maybe you don't necessarily want to copy everything I do as far as how I do it. Uh, and I just I give a, about a thousand tasks for my dupes to do and just hope that they could figure it out. So as was mentioned by Devil Raylan down here, he's saying you don't necessarily want to give them all that stuff. You want to you want your dupes to focus, especially when you have a small amount of people. Which I still have a small amount of people here with eight. Smallish. It wouldn't not real small, but. And I've already given them a ton of tasks. And there's a, there's some talks about priorities and whatnot. So right now, I am not using I am not using auto priorities just yet, or enabled proximity. But we are getting to that point where that will be an advantage. So if I look at the travel time, I can start to understand just how much I'm I'm running around. I would think at this point, considering how big the base is that enable proximity is a good way to go. I've kind of customized how I'm managing the priorities right now rather than using auto priority. I think that's an okay way to go. But let's see how it works if we just do the proximity now. So a dupe should kind of just look around to see what they have close by and actually focus on that. So they spend less time going from here to way up there. You know what I mean? All right, so let's take a look here at the stable. So currently I have a five by eight room and you can take those up to a maximum size of 96 tiles so i may want to take this and maximize it which would be in this case 19 tiles wide a new tool that we can use here is potentially just use wire i found this and then i say okay how far do i got to go to get to 19 so i'd actually have to go all the way over there just to see what it's like and then hit escape so you don't actually build it but that means i would want the ladder rather than going here I'd rather have this ladder come down over here. I'm going to build that floor over, and then we're going to bring the ladder down. I'm just going to work on digging this out. I do have some bristle blossoms. Those are never going to grow there, so I'm just going to get rid of them. So let's try to get this done here in a cycle. Hopefully these guys will just knock it out. So I'm going to leave that wire there, but I'm just going to put it to a priority of one real quick. That way my dupes hopefully don't build it, because I don't, I don't need that wire. And then we're going to build a pneumatic door here. And I'm going to try to change this door, this to a pneumatic door over there as well. So I gotta just deconstruct the wall and make that what it's gonna be. Throw down some sandstone to the floor here like this. As far as decorations, once again, I'm gonna try to use the crown molding if possible. So since I can't reach all the way up there, I'm gonna have to just build some ladders like this, just for construction. And you can actually build every other one of these because you can kind of jump to them. That'll also allow us to put some other things down here too, so. 
crown molding. Ah, ah, ah. Press O and try to flip it to the other side. Or don't, come on. <laughs> so look at the decor in this spot, yeah. But you see why we have to sweep things up? Because look at how much the total decor is down here where your dupes are. Very, very low. So it's important to keep sweeping up stuff as you're digging it. Otherwise, you're just going to really ruin your decor and that's not good. Here's the other thing you don't want to have, even though I definitely made that mistake here at the very beginning, um, is if you have a shine bug near your bristle blossom farm, they are going to eat that bristle blossom. They're not going to eat the entire seed, but there's a good chance that they'll take a big chunk out of it, about a about a thousand calories of the 1,000 something that it'll, it'll drop. So if you're spending, if you're using a lot of precious water to grow that bristle blossom, you might as well consider these cute little shine bugs vampires because they're just sucking all the nutrients out of the plant. So rather than your duplicates getting it, who you really want, a shine bug gets it rather than eating what it should be eating, which is uh, phosphorite. So do I have the critter feeder? I do have it. So it's right there. So that's under food, critter, feeder. So I'll kind of put that over here. It's a little bit out of the way, but at least I can fill that with phosphor right now. So the shine bug will continue to survive and flourish within my base, but not eat the food that I want to preserve. So even though we made that change, it's really hard to understand where your benefits are because there's just so many details here. You can see there's a lot of deliver, a lot of deliver, <laughs> and a lot of deliver. Oh, I, I don't know. It's like, how do you really know? I haven't figured out how to make that part all that useful for what I'm doing. Okay, so once we get this dug up and swept to where it needs to go. What? Where did my shine bug go? Oh, he went up there to eat the phosphorite. Good job, buddy. Aha! Okay, sweep this up. And then, rather than make this thing go, we're just going to uproot it. This one here has also been harvested harvested as well so we're going to deconstruct that 44 34 yeah we can get rid of all that we don't need that all right a lot of construction going on here look at all this oh i spit oh you nearly got yourself killed i guess i should really pay attention to this furniture how far does it actually go three tiles oh so it probably doesn't really reach all the way down there oh well just gonna try to keep digging out this stuff Make sure I'm working around here. Make sure I have enough metal and stuff. No! Stupid hatch! Stop eating my foods! I sweep this up! Sweep it! Come on, dupes! No! Don't you dare! Get out of here! So the one thing you don't want to do, by the way, is, is kill this stuff early on. Because this is actually going to be really helpful. So, I know that's kind of an early tendency for a lot of new players is to just kill the hatches. Because they're like, ah, what is this thing? But no, if you keep that around, we're going to find out here that they're going to become quite helpful. Get out of here. I don't need you. Okay, so what we're going to want to put down here is a critter drop-off. So as we find more and more hatches, or since that's what we're going to put in here, that's what I want to have. So I'm going to build one of those. But then I'm also going to need to give my one of my duplicates the, the job of ranch. And I have Ruby here who's finished. So maybe Ruby can do it. Yes. Perfect. Another thing that's always a good idea to do is to kind of dig a little bit of a pit here if you have a really long spot of water like this. Make sure you dig up uh, the little dam that might be there, but actually dig this down just a little bit. That'll allow the water to kind of settle there so you don't get stuck with like a large body of water that is not going anywhere because it's just too flat. But you might have to move pumps and stuff like that down, which is not a big deal. Okay, so for my critters that I want to drop off here, what I'm going to say is hatches. If we can find it, there it is. Hatch, hatchlings. And then there's going to be a wrangle tool somewhere. Oh, there it is as well. N on your keyboard. So now I'm going to want to wrangle these guys and put them down in that one spot where they're going to be, rather than just running all over my base. So Ruby's going to come down there and tie them up. Ha-ha! Way to be stuck. And we'll make that a priority of six so that, you know, this little guy isn't just waiting forever. <laughs> so here's the little rec room that they can come to. See that if they use the water cooler, then they'd actually get a benefit out of it. 
I don't think the rec room itself has any sort of bonus to it. And my research is stalled out here, unfortunately. So make sure I put that up to a higher priority. Make sure that that, that keeps running. Yep. Here's another one to be wrangled. There's another one. I have so many. Oh, there's another one down here. Man, so many. There we go. Dropped one off. Right here. It's going to find a little spot to bed down after he eats some stuff. Maybe poops out a little bit of coal. There it is. <laughs> this game. I'm going to build a storage compactor down here. We're going to pump it full of coal. We're also going to put a critter feeder down there. We can also deconstruct this. We don't need that. It's already built the crown molding. How's that decor working out in here? Yeah, let's see, it doesn't reach down that far. That was kind of useless, but... Looks like with this tile here, I can fill this area with some oxygen. And still have carbon dioxide down there as well, so things die. They won't necessarily go bad right off the bat. Although I might want to move that door up a little bit. So I'm going to reposition that door right there. Just give it a little bit more. I don't know. Just trying some things here. So consumable ore. I want to have coal. Make sure I have coal in a couple of spots there. There we go. And it burrowed down. Excellent. All right. So when it comes to actually using the critter feeder here, there's some things we need to understand or maybe just have a, an awareness about. It, it depends on what type of food you feed your hatches of what chance of what hatch is going to be born. So right over here, uh, you're going to have this. There's this little description here. You can potentially see, okay, if you feed it sedimentary rock, you're going to have a better chance of a stone hatch. Now, stone hatches are really good as far as producing coal. They're also a little bit more hardy, so they're kind of actually harder to kill. You might want to be careful if you're trying to get some food out of them. For the most part, just having a small amount of hatches here, which is a good way to go for just starting off, is really what you should focus on. Maybe not even worry about what you're feeding them too much. Sage hatches are pretty much for food and, like, recycling undesirable food or spoiled foods you can drop it down there and they'll just eat it up and i guess the thing about sage hatches is they produce eggs at a higher rate so they can actually be really useful for making barbecue which is fantastic for your dupes they love barbecue i love barbecue too so there's some strategy a lot of strategy behind what you feed your your critters and whatnot so just to keep in mind that's something you might want to be aware of for the most part here, really early off, we're just going to try to have a couple of hatches in here. And if we get more than what we want, we can kill a couple of the older ones off and get their food or just eggs or whatever. There'll, there'll be a source of food. So you can set up what you want to feed over here. It's pretty crazy. But I just want to click on hatch, click the little over bit. I might even go ahead and just make a couple more critter feeders so that I can really decide what I want to feed them, you know? Okay, so what I'm going to choose here, I guess I have some sedimentary rock. I don't really have much, do I? No, I barely have any sedimentary rock. I have a 33% chance to get a sage hatch if I just feed them whatever. So over here, I'm going to just use sandstone for right now. That'll be enough for starters. All right, so there's a lot to ranching if you really want to become an expert on it. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to try to keep uh, the amount of critters that we have inside of this room relatively small so this is a stable you can see it's 90 tiles should probably make it a little bit wider darn it <laughs> so and what i want to do is have it be 96 that way i can get the most out of it so i'm just going to deconstruct this stuff here and then essentially what i'm going to say here is auto wrangle uh, surplus and then i'm just going to get rid of them but in order to make this a stable, I need to have a grooming station inside of here. That way I can tame these hatches and, and make them mine. And they'll be really happy about it. Oh, okay, excellent. So now I have a jukebox that I can throw down inside of my recreation room. Yeah. That does require 960 watts, though. So I have to, I have to be careful on that one. Okay, so I'm not to the point of having, like, really big wires just yet. So... Just to power this thing up and kind of just keep it powered, I'm just going to go ahead and build a manual generator, a simple battery, and then we're just going to plug it in with a normal wire. It isn't used that often, so this will be kind of a low maintenance item. We don't have to worry too much about trying to plug it into the rest of the power grid. 
I'm digging out a spot over here. That'll be for the egg cracker. So I can go ahead and just drop that down because I will have eggs that are going to be coming out of the hatch farm down here. And since I completed my research now, I want to make sure I get to the insulated pipes. So it's gonna be next on the to-do list. Rather than using that big light there, I'm just gonna put down this light and I'm going to start to rework the bathroom a little bit here. Lavatory, it's not a bathroom. <laughs> Even though I'm gonna make that mistake every time. Okay, so what I can do is I can put in a door here. Oh no! All right, so one of the things I can do here is I can put in a door and this allows me to give a direction to how these dupes are gonna go through um, the laboratory over here. Because when you look at a door, in this case, like this pneumatic door, you can say you only want it to go left or right. You can also give individual access to certain duplicates to run that way. So this way I can say, well, if you're going to go here, you only can go in this direction and you can only come out that direction. And then I'm just gonna build some more cots down here. There you go. Okay, I'm also going to put in a solid door right here. That should give me just enough room to make this a barracks for my nosy duplicate, which is Marie. So since Marie is such a loud snorer, she's gonna get her own room. Lucky to be here, I guess. And then I'm gonna find the crown molding again. Flip that around. Not build it there because I can't. I'm just gonna compress these cots a little bit. And we can put a pedestal in the middle of the room. That'll help the decor there. It's not going to be uh, quite like this one with where we can upgrade it to comfy beds, but depending on who the dupe is, it won't be a big deal. Okay, so now if I look at the room, yes, we have a stable, so that's good. So the advantage of keeping your critters inside of a stable versus not a stable <laughs> is that they're going to produce a lot more eggs for us. Otherwise, we can just kind of leave them out there and they're going to need to still process coal, so long as they're not glum or overcrowded or anything like that. And that all comes from just having too many critters in one spot. So there's a maximum number you can have. And that's what it's all about. So, one of the things to also have, besides just that, if I can find it again, uh, don't even worry about it. Go over here, you can just hit copy. There we go. I can just drop the extra ones out if I need to. Might actually work better if I do this. Look at how many there are. Holy moly. See, now it's overcrowded. So, how many do I have inside of here? I've got nine. So, I got, I got a few too many. There's an old one, 96. We can attack that guy. You can attack that one as well, 96. Got some old hatches in there. We'll just get rid of those. Turn them into food. Okay, when we talk about food here as well, you also have to keep in mind that we don't want meat. What we want to do is we want to take that and we're going to want to cook that into a really nice recipe, which is gonna be barbecue. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna fill this with phosphorite now as well, because Meep's heading off to combat. We're going to be able to follow. Meep into war. Here he goes. He's going to go down here. He's going to take care of our overpopulation problem. Zapped. So behind there is... Should be some meat. There it is. Nope, oh, nope. Just keep clicking. Nom, 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 nom. So 3,200 calories of meat. And there's another one dead. So that meat is now going to be picked up and delivered over here where it'll be kept nice and fresh. So if I put an egg cracker here, I should be able to automate the whole cracking process. Maybe. There's currently three units. Actually, I'm just gonna leave that on zero. And then if I put a mechanized door beneath this. Ooh, and then I use automation on a clock sensor. Oh, hang on guys. I know I'm getting way beyond intro to oxygen not included, but I can't help myself. Um, is that I can automate this thing. So, if that's activated for 5% at the end of a cycle. So that's gonna be 5%. Activation time right around here in the middle of the night. That'll open up the door, drop whatever's on top of this down here so that it becomes nice and fresh. Or it stays nice and fresh. Currently I have three hatch eggs, so we're gonna bring a few up there and we're going to try to crack those. Okay, so you can see that now that there's only seven inside of here, they're not overcrowded, so that keeps them nice and happy. And here's yet another chart for the stable and how things can be overcrowded. So maximum critters size inside of a stable. Hatches, you can have eight. Otherwise, they're going to get a debuff, and 
minus five happiness and all that fun stuff. So if we take a look at the happiness of a critter, it produces more materials as a result, as opposed to being unhappy. Current morale, 16 and 10. So they can both, both of my scientists now can actually move up. Both of my research assistants can move up to scientists. That's what I want to do. San's going to move up to a chef. And then Marie might move around to the actual, to being the scientist. Just kind of moving them around is whatever makes sense, I guess. All right, so I'm building a floor in my stable. Just to kind of uh, allow them to actually groom. So I had to knock a bunch of these out. Because I wasn't quite perfect the way I did this. So I'll have to go and re-wrangle those guys. Meanwhile, I'm just going to build the rest of the floor here because I that's I want these to be tamed. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, Hassan, you just left this one wrapped up in water. Oh, game over. Okay, so since I was able to process those eggs, I should be able to come over here and actually make an omelet. Nice. So that gives a nice quality. That is nice quality for my my dupes all right so there we go now we can groom them so ruby's over here so here we're going to set this to auto wrangle extra and then we'll just set all down here and we'll actually make this a little bit lower once we actually get to that point so when they get wrangled we'll just drop them down here and let them run around dang ruby's got two of them bam there you go so you can see here there's just a couple of cycles and then they'll they won't be wild anymore and you can see some more details there as it's tame, it will increase its metabolism, requiring care from the rancher, and you get benefits for it too, so. All right, I have some more jobs that have been mastered here. The chef, that's good. So Marie likes to be scientist. I'll make that happen. Yeah, we'll just have two scientists, that'll be fine. Okay, I'm going to auto-prioritize by their jobs now, so that should affect the priorities a little bit at this point making their jobs quite a bit higher as compared to other things. So if I go back on over here to priorities and I go to reset priorities, there we go. Now they're going to focus more on their jobs compared to other things. All right, so I finally got the insulated pipes all figured out. So using igneous rock, I'm just gonna go over all the rest of the pipes here. So anything that's in this loop is going to become insulated. All right, as far as consumables are concerned, I don't think I need any dupes eating the omelets just yet. Um, just because I don't need the extra morale. Ruby is the only one who's actually kind of stressed out. And that's because she keeps dealing with low oxygen, which makes sense given where she's at and having to run down here constantly in the water and stuff. So her stress should go down given a little bit of time. Also means I might want to move this grooming station to the left. Okay, so here we go. I can move Marie up here. Hassan, you can move up as well. Who else is sleeping where they shouldn't be? Mm, not sure. I don't think anybody else is. On a pedestal here, we could put something interesting. <laughs> For the dupes, how about we could put a bottle of water on display? Yeah, that'll be awesome. <laughs> Some crown molding. All right, we're going to throw that down over here. Finish that off. That really is good for decor, isn't it? It's just great. Look at that. 30-something. Perfect. Okay, so one of the problems I have is that I don't have anybody who's going to be a builder. So e even though you go to the auto-prioritize thing, you still have to pay attention to, like, some things that aren't being... That you just don't have somebody for the job, I guess, right? So since I don't have an architect and I don't have a courier, I, got, I have to be careful. But then again, I have two plumbers down there, so um, nice bed is going to become that. And then I think I might want to bring in yet an, another duplicate to get an apprentice architect, because right now I just don't have enough dupes for all my jobs. So that should happen here any moment now. <laughs> Caregiver, excellent. All right, that'll be perfect. Welcome to the base, Travaldo. Please don't try to bury my dupes. This guy has a tendency to... Just bury all your other duplicates in just about anything. You give him a chance, he'll mess you up. That's a joke. He's really just like any other mildly dysfunctional duplicant. <laughs> but uh, I did have one time where that's what he would do. So and he likes to cook, so he can be a chef. So then rather than that, Hassan, you can be a 
Turner's going to be the builder. Just moving everybody else around. Hassan, there you go. Okay, yeah. Hatch is in here, just ready to die, since I have like three too many. And then I'll wrangle this one, and that one. There we go. All right, I'm getting research done really quick now. Awesome. So now I have the hydroponic farm, fertilizer synthesizer, farming station. That'll be helpful for when I have some fertilizer and I want to grow some things faster. Just to help with moving around the base, this would be a good one to get because I can get fire, I can make a fire pole. Oops, I set this up. I want that to only be moving to the left. Probably brought a couple of little germs around because of that. But as they use the bathroom, yes, I want them to go out that way. Okay, now I'm gonna look at the schedule here. Uh, Hassan, Harold, Travaldo, and Marie, they're gonna end up on a slightly different schedule. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make them work in the morning, but I'm gonna give them a bath time that is before their downtime. Maybe I'll even give them two spots. This way we can kind of share the same resources without having to build a second station for it. So I wanna make sure that I have airflow tiles down here, to make it easy for my dupes to breathe. And more importantly, to allow the carbon dioxide an easy place for it to flow out. This also means I can go ahead and deconstruct this down here. I don't need that anymore. All right, so the hatches are pretty much figured out now. They're really not doing anything that I, that I wouldn't expect them to do at this point. So the, I only have eight of them down here. I kind of got rid of the extras. And I've processed a few extra eggs here and there. So that's up and running. If we take a look at the duplicates, we can see that the morale is now 17, 18, 12, 16. So they keep going up a little bit there. If we take a look at Rowan, we could probably see that he used a jukebox or something like that. Yeah, recently danced, plus two. So that's the bonus you're getting from the jukebox. All right, so for about the first half of this video here, we've pretty much focused on a little bit of a stable, a little bit of a ranch. That'll be give us a couple of good resources out of it. Uh, messed around with the water down here and also did enough research to get ourselves to the insulated pipes. That'll really help temperature-wise. But now we want to focus on farms. I think that's going to be real important. We want to really just keep increasing the amount of food that we can have. Uh, oxygen? The base isn't, like, tremendously good, but I'm surprised at how well these things are doing down here. Like, I haven't needed to make more oxygen for a while now, but I have used up all the algae that I've dug up. So, there are some larger repositories up here of algae that are nearby. However, what I would really like to do is potentially get myself to an electrolyzer. So, a couple different ways I can go. So just to keep up with the oxygen, I'm just going to dig this stuff up. Try to keep some of my natural resources around. I mean, this stuff's just free food if you can keep it up and running. So it's always good to try to keep free food around if you can, if you can do so. All right. So I recently changed all these insulated pipe, pipes to insulated. So now I'm going to do the same for the return line here as well. I might have to dig up more igneous rock, though. It probably would be a good idea just to keep mining at this point. There's some germs there. Might want to avoid that. Not a big deal, but we're going to avoid it. Okay, so I can also deconstruct this. I just don't need it. That, 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 that. Just try to get rid of the stuff I don't need. Okay, so another thing I'm going to do down here is I'm going to kind of rework this into its own chamber. So I'll put a door in there just so it keeps carbon dioxide inside there. I mean, right now it's kind of open and it just works. Things flow around, but it's taking up more space than I really need it to. So I'm just going to try to rework the spaces I have. Why is the crown molding missing a tile? Eh, who knows? Rowan's really enjoying all of his mining. Man, look at him go. Okay, so as I mentioned before, you can build doors on their sides. So if I just increase that real quick, get rid of that. So I put that door sideways like so, then I can power that door up, and then I'm just gonna work on surrounding this. Well, actually, I can just wait till we harvest this and just get rid of it. So I can start to replace this with just uh, farm tiles rather than planter boxes. It's a little bit smaller. So then, uh, right down here, I can build some more farm tiles, and I can use kind of a combination between the mealwood and then actually just grow some mushrooms down below. So there we go. I just deconstruct this. 
as I'm harvesting them. Choose ourselves another duplicate. Should be able to have one more. Or do I have enough oxygen? That's kind of what I'm worried about. So what I'm trying to do here is turn this into a farm uh, that'll just kind of allow me to do both the mealwood and the mushrooms all kind of right there in the middle of my base. So it's close to where I'm doing some cooking. It's close to where I'm doing the eating. It's just all nearby. One thing to keep in mind now that I have all these bathrooms is I could just go ahead and make these a nice lower normal priority rather than being elevated like it was before. I haven't dug up any slime just yet, but if I when I do, I want to make sure I select that. It would also be great to get rid of these wash basins. So some of these did not get built <laughs> as insulated pipes, so I'm just going to go over them again. Keep smashing out the research as fast as I can go. Okay, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. That's a good one to go for. So is liquid tuning. I like that one as well. Either of those are what you're going to need if you're going to want to use the bathroom as a, a cooling loop. Luckily, all these farms are pretty much on the same cycle, so I can just make most of them work together. Hmm, nobody's delivering to the coal generator. It's not for lack of coal. All right, so here we go with the farm tiles. We're going to build those up right there. Not all of those, but pretty close to it. I'm also going to get rid of this, which is my ration box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with two refrigerators. They hold a little bit more in the same amount of space if you turn them vertically. So you can also put two of them side by side. So that's really handy. You can see the automation thingy, my bobber here. So if I were to be cracking eggs it should then go and open up and it'll drop down in case you just don't sweep it right i guess i got too many in there so i'll try to take it down to seven. Oh no that's because there's an egg i got it so maybe it's a good idea to keep this at six we'll see how the auto ranching thing goes bam take that okay so i can start to... Ooh. okay there we go I can store hatchling eggs up here. Hmm. Okay. I was just thinking if I had an automatic storage bin that goes up to a certain amount and then flips an automation signal, closing the door, allowing the egg cracker to run, I could automate the cracking process. Don't. Yeah. Potentially. I think that might work. What am I doing here? These. That's not what I want. Get out of here. Ooh, got some more research. Fire pole, the temperature shift plate was done. Insulated tile, excellent. And a space heater. Okay, so one of the things I'm doing here is I'm building a floor and then I'm building a wall as well. So that way when I go to dig up the stuff inside of here, I don't end up losing all of my carbon dioxide. I do want to preserve that. So notice how the fungal spore, it requires an atmosphere of carbon dioxide with at least 150 grams in it and with a temperature of 5 to 35 degrees Celsius. So if you compare that to the mealwood, you know, its temperature is 10 to 30 and it can live in a lot of different atmospheres. Age 100 of 100? Oh, attack it. I actually have a lot of elderly. Okay, so now when I go to plant a fungal spore, it'll be right here. And notice that I'm, I'm leaving one extra tile above this. One of the things that is relatively handy is these things called auto sweepers. So we can use that to automatically uh, fertilize farms. So leaving your farm a little bit extra tall is a good way to kind of allow for a little bit more automation later in the game. I mean, that's a ways down, down the road, but we can do that. At this point, I can't plant any fungal spores because I don't have access to slime just yet. So one thing we will want to build down here is a farming station. Now, that's not going to benefit our mealwood, but other things that we could grow in here, such as those fungal spores right there, it will actually allow you to fertilize them or to take fertilizer and allow the stuff to grow faster so you get more out of it. Let's see here. I could probably dig up a little bit of this slime. We'll go ahead and do, do that. Go right on over here. There it is. Just a little bit. And just a little bit right there. It might be a good idea to have one of those water lock doodads right inside of here to hold your slime. That way, we can do the fungal spores 
all just right in the same spot there but otherwise we're going to be splashing through uh this thing every time and i don't think that's a good idea who's been entombed oh no where's trivaldo where is he <laughs> i got two dupes in one go <laughs> <laughs> professional that's how you do it all right there we go dig that up there we go try to build those tiles after digging okay thanks of course now you can't get to this one ah boomer let's keep doing some research here we're not going to get to the cooling in this loop unfortunately Ooh, but exosuits okay yeah we can get to the exosuits that's even better that'll just make slime really easy oops I did not build a refrigerator just yet. This is actually really important to have a couple of those. Otherwise, dupes don't pick food up off the ground and deliver it to where they need to go. Okay, so organic. I'm going to store it over here for now, but I'll probably do something different because that's just kind of a, a lot of splashing around. I don't think it's really all that necessary because what I should be able to do is take a bottle emptier here and just empty just a little bit of water into this storage bin and then store slime right there. Why is everybody using this outhouse and not this one? All right, whatever, I guess you guys are just making more dirt. So a hatchling egg is how much, how big? Where is it? There you are. It's two kilograms. So if we go down to the critter egg here, if I just say four kilograms, and there's not a lot I can store inside of there. I can only store a couple of eggs. Oh, I might want to store it down here. Nah, I guess it, I guess it doesn't go bad. And then organic, that'll be slime right there once that all gets figured out. And then move debris because we don't need all that just laying around. Same with all of this. Awesome. Textile loom. Perfect. Just what I wanted. Actually, should probably put that over there on the left where I kind of have some other equipment. Okay, so I could do a little bit of work around my base. I need better decor crown molding it is bam everywhere more crown molding aha got ourselves the first sage hatch egg we'll make this party of six so that somebody actually sweeps something up big fat no okay all right let's see if i can get some liquid over here come on now storage bin you can see that we've pretty much used up this water down here We're pretty close to it if we go down there we try to mop things up yeah that's pretty much Pretty much all gone. So I'm going to want to dig down further and tap into my last water source down here. So water is going to become a much more important thing as we move forward. There's obviously quite a lot of water still around as far as polluted water is concerned. Obviously you need to clean that, but wow, even, even this map does not have much polluted water. Oh boy, things might get interesting. Hmm, Mima, that's a pretty good duplicate right there. So Mima should be, there you go. What's a good job for Mima? Oh, good, you wanna be a gopher. I do need more supply. Oh, wow, check this out. So Rowan here has a current morale of 17, which means he can go all the way up to tier five. Wow, okay, awesome. So I've got my first tier five duplicate. That's pretty good here by the, by cycle 75. So we're coming up to the end of this little episode here. Did I make it as far as I wanted to go? No. But that's pretty normal in oxygen not included. That's why we keep playing it. Um, there's some definite things that I am going to have to take care of here. Water being one of them. Oxygen being the other. So I think I'm okay on food as far as the farms that I got going on here. I'll be able to get the dust caps up and running. The mushrooms I have a spot that's a little bit better than this to store my slime. Once that ever happens... We should have some water bottles here that should allow me to sweep on up. And I'm doing a lot of really quick construction this cycle here to dig down and relocate to a lower water source. So I'm going to do this number right there and that's just going to take care of it. Of course, if I don't dig that one spot, then my dupes can still move. That's kind of a, an important thing. <laughs> oh, here's a tricky stunt thing. So if I put a door right there, not only should I be able to walk on top of it? Ha <laughs> Should be able to go down beneath it. Nope. Still says unreachable. Ah, it was a good try. Man, why didn't I get any water up there? All right, well, I don't want to quit, but I am at the end. So I am going to have to stop here. All right, so I'm here at the end of cycle 75. Just have to wrap things up. 
Um, we did increase the morale of the duplicants a little bit further, so we're up to now a tier 5 job. So that was a real improvement that we made here in the last 25 cycles. Uh, got ourselves a little bit of an egg cracker that we can kind of use. That's cool. I was able to store a couple of eggs over here. That's pretty awesome. And do have a little bit of a ranch set up down here now. So I wasn't really thinking that I was going to do that here at, you know, between cycle 50 and 75. But the more I stopped to look at it, the more it seemed to make sense. However, there's a lot of people that are quite a bit better at ranching than I am. So you'll probably read about it in the description down there below. And if you guys got some recommendations on how to set up ranches early on, mid -bay, midway, and then like super automatic, I'd like to look into that here in the future. So go ahead and leave those comments down below. And probably the two big things that I have going on in the base that I really need to solve here at this point, which I've almost kind of kept putting off, is I have to have a better source of water at this point. And I have to get off of algae. So the oxygen diffuser is still doing its job. I'm surprisingly running on only one right now and just a bunch of uh, terrariums down here. So uh, what what's kind of happened here is I've moved a lot of the water into these bottles here and there, and they're evaporating out into polluted oxygen, which is then turning into clean oxygen. So I'm really able to get a lot of oxygen that way, which is why I'm able to support as many dupes as I have now. But uh, the electrolyzer and hydrogen and all that stuff, that's just going to have to happen here in the next 25 cycles, just to kind of show you that, because you may want to set that up earlier in your playthrough than what I'm doing here. I'm also going to want to tap into some polluted water so that I have some sources of, you know, extra water that I'm able to pull on because this here is not going to last forever. So thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. Maybe you learned a little something. And if I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. A big shout out to my Patreon supporters. for You guys are absolutely awesome. And thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out.